Hey guys, I got back here. Um, so when it comes to survival and being prepared in our supplies, um, a lot of times we all think about the same concept, which is not a bad thing because we're all thinking of the stepping stones. If I were to tell you guys right now to go out and create a bug out bag or even, you know, a bug in situation, your you know, emergency supplies in case maybe a storm or natural disaster, whatever the case may be, um, we're all pretty much going to think along the same lines. We're going to think, you know, food, fire starter, uh, first aid kit, those kind of things. And that's definitely good because that's going to be the stepping stone. That's the foundation of any kind of survival kit. Uh, what I want to talk about today are kind of the odds and ends, maybe some of the oddities, what I call morale boosters, that some of us don't always think about. Uh, also, just because I've been asked about it a lot lately, today I'm enjoying a uh, Drew Estate Norteño. This is actually my first time having the cigars recommended to me, and um, it's fantastic. I love this. Hi guys, so these are just a few things that I like to uh, consider oddities, or things that you may just not immediately think about putting in your bug out bag. And obviously there's going to be some of you who heard just like, yeah, that's a no-brainer, but trust me, there's a lot of people who don't think to add certain of uh, these kind of items to their bug out bag, which, or, you know, emergency keep or whatever, which could actually um, help build with morale, or just maybe things you didn't think about. Um, so I'm, there's no particular order here, um, just kind of going into it. Um, this right here is an instant cold pack. What I like about this is that in order to use it, you um, you shake it, you break it up, um, it gets cold, you wrap it up in something and you apply it to whatever you need to, uh, if you have a, uh, be it something as simple as a sore muscle or some kind of inflammation. I like this because honestly it is fairly compact um, and I like the fact that it's kind of ready to use cold pack, compression pack, whatever the case you need. Um, this is something simple, it's just a, um, it's a foldable tote. Um, you unfold it and it becomes almost as big as this table, a little bit smaller than that. I like that because if you need to transport goods, if you're collecting firewood and you just need something easy to transport it, even collecting water, this thing will actually help collect water, bring it back to your campsite, where, whatever the case may be. It's always good to have, especially with how light this is and how compact it folds up, I like the idea of being able to just have something like that. Entertainment value. A lot of people underestimate that if you're in a survival situation, whether it's you know, ridiculous emergency or whether it's just something to pass the time, we need to entertain ourselves. We start to get cabin fever, we start to go a little bit crazy if we don't have some kind of form of entertainment. Um, obviously singing or whistling a little song might be good. If you're a musician, maybe a harmonica. I know some of you right now are going to be like, yeah, but then you give yourself away. Keep in mind, not every bug out situation you're going to be hiding from somebody, all right? Sometimes it's actually good to be found. But anyway, I like having some playing cards. Um, I like these guys because they're uh, waterproof. They're just clear, kind of plasticky. Um, it can make them a little difficult to play with, but if you're <laughs> already in a shit, it's the fan situation that you're resorting to digging in your bug out bag for playing cards, you probably aren't that picky. Um, so I like these guys. I also have just some, um, you know, kind of more standard paperish kind, the, the crack and rum cards. Um, so throw some playing cards in there. It, it kind of helps get your mind off of the bad that's going on. Um, it kind of gives you something else to do. Um, guilty pleasures, um, you know, you, you guys already know that I'm a cigar smoker, um, so I like having a, uh, I actually have this attached to my, my car bag. Um, this is a, a little cigar saver, helps keep cigars a little bit fresher, and I have an emergency cigar when I need it. Um, I have in here, uh, also by Drew Estate, this is uh, called the Tabac. Uh, I just added a little cedar wrap around it because that actually will give me a little extra something to use as a uh, matcher to help with the burning the cigar. Uh, over here I have a, um, this is a sewing kit uh, by Lewis and Clark. And uh, you guys are thinking, I'm not doing arts and crafts in my bug out. I like to have a sewing kit for multiple reasons. I mean, obviously if some of your gear gets torn and you need to fix it up real quick, I actually ended up breaking into this one of the um, first nights that I, I uh, had got it. I went on a camping trip and I used to, you know, kind of test out my bug out bag and whatnot. And sure enough, raccoons ended up chewing through part of my tent. And uh, I was able to fix it and sew it up with a nice little convenient compact sewing kit. Nine volt battery. Why should I have a nine volt battery in my bug out bag if there's, if I don't own anything in my bug out bag that requires a nine volt battery? I'm sure plenty of you have seen the multitude, uh, multitude of uses that they have for a nine volt battery. Um, one of my favorites, obviously, is Firestarter. Simply um, take some steel wool and just apply it to the front end, both ends here, and that's going to give you a spark, and it's actually going to catch the wool on fire. You can bring it over to whatever you're trying to catch fire, your little fire pit, whatever, and it's going to go off way easier than trying to sit there with a magnesium striker over and over and over. 
Um, if you have wire, you can obviously come up with many different things to use a uh, 9 volt battery for. Uh, over here, you guys may have already seen in some of my videos, um, I like this is a off-brand, but just as good, just as potent, basically like a 5-hour energy. I like having this because, again, multitude of reasons. If you're feeling sluggish, um, if you need kind of some extra vitamins, if you need a boost, um, just chugging one of those things is going to help you. Um, it actually tastes good. So it's one of those things, again, you're, you're improving your body and you're improving your mind at the same time. It gives you kind of that extra little will to go. Next to it, this, um, don't pay attention to the label, that's not actually what's in here. This is um, 153 proof grain alcohol. Um, again, this kind of has a multitude of reasons. For one, maybe you just <laughs> need to have a drink to get your mind off of whatever's going on. Well, there you go. Um, this thing is, um, with the proof it's in, it's actually pretty darn flammable, so you can use it to kind of help with fire starting or whatever the case may be. Um, and then, of course, there are some applications where you can use such a high alcohol content like that in uh, medical purposes. All right, going over here, I've got um, hand warmers. Now, I do live in Florida, so it doesn't necessarily get terribly cold here. Um, I still like the idea to have hand warmers because, again, it's more of a convenience factor, and it's also we're talking about morale. We're talking about getting your mindset out of the crap that you're already in and having a little bit more comforts of home. Right next to that, speaking of comforts of home, I do have, in all of my bags, I have a, a decent amount of toilet paper. Now, I actually have gotten some shit in one of my YouTube videos um, where somebody was ragging on me saying that I'm not manly because I carry toilet paper in my bug out bag. For one, toilet paper can have more uses than just wiping your ass. Um, granted, again, that's honestly my sole purpose of why I have this in here. Now, you might call that manly or unmanly, but at the same time, if I don't have to use a corn cob husk to wipe my ass, then I'm not going to. I don't quite understand what's not manly about enjoying toilet paper, uh, but whatever. But obviously you can still use it for fire starter, you can use it, hell, you can make a Molotov cocktail if you really needed to. Don't do that, disclaimer. All right, going over here, I do have pet food. Um, this is dog and cat food. Again, um, there are some situations where maybe your bug out plan or even your bug in plan is to obviously have your companion with you. Um, again, we're speaking of morale. Now, if the animal that you love and adore is going to be detrimental into your survival, then you may have to make a hard decision there. But the morale of just something as simple as keeping a loved one, like your favorite dog, your favorite cat, whatever, having them with you is one of those things that can kind of help boost you and keep you going. Um, so obviously you're going to need to feed them and you're not going to want to feed them MREs, so I do suggest to bring some kind of animal food with you. Um, something here, this is obviously something very simple as a magazine. Now obviously you can go smaller, you can get a little book, whatever the case may be. Again, we're talking about morale, we're talking about entertainment, we're talking about getting your mind off of things, taking a break and actually rejuvenating your mind to allow your body to go a little bit further. Um, this kind of seems like a duh, right? A hat. Now I say that, but I kid you not, I have had actually multiple people where I've you know, helped them out, reviewed their bug out bags, whatever the case may be, and a lot of people don't simply have a, a hat. Um, now again, that might seem like a duh, or it might be because people are like, well, I'm just going to be wearing a hat. Well, we like to think that, but there's, you know, we're probably not wearing hats 24-7, unless you're just that guy. Um, so just having something as simple as an extra hat in your bug out bag, on your bug out bag, strapped on the side, wherever the case may be. Hat, obviously, again, has multiple uses. You can use it for camouflage. You can use it just to keep the sun and the heat off you, right? All right, going over, I'm going to go skip around here. Um, corned beef. Why do I have this here? Well, corned beef and then kind of the um, this Starkist tunic here. Obviously, this can be a little bit bulky. I like the idea of in your emergency food with your bags. Again, this kind of seems like a duh, but I've had people who all they did was have MREs or these little food ration bars, which are pretty much just carbs. That's good for survival, absolutely. But if you're already in a horrible situation and you're miserable, uh, for one, you're going to need protein. You absolutely have to have protein. You can eat those carb things all day long, and people say carbs give you energy. Yes, absolutely. Carbs do give you energy mostly when they react with protein. People forget that aspect of it. Um, the protein is going to help give you the extra strength. Carbs give you the energy, zero strength. Protein gives you strength, zero energy. Um, so you kind of need to have both. It's called protein synthesis, not to get all nerd on you. Um, so I like to make sure that I have some sort of protein in my emergency bag. Um, and then good tasting protein. 
Now, why do I have this Mrs. Tash seasoning here? Again, I've been picked on about that before, but here's the thing. Again, it's all about morale. It's all about that will to survive and that will to move on. Um, if I have to go catch fish or even shoot a freaking squirrel, I would like to at least imagine that I'm eating a nice home-cooked meal as much as I can. So something as simple as these Mrs. Dash seasonings is going to kind of help bring a little bit of that feeling back. Um, again, um, some people might say this is a duh, but some kind of an eating tool, eating device. This is actually called the Eaton Tool by CRKT. Um, again, some people just don't think about these kind of things. They have all these kind of food or they're like, I'm going to, you know, just trap this, eat that, whatever. Again, just the convenience of having something as simple as a little eating tool um, is going to help kind of help you go on a little bit and uh, survive a little bit more comfortably. All right, going in the middle here, um, the carabiner, everybody has some kind of carabiner, right? Um, not everybody has a actual like weight approved for rock climbing carabiner or a locking carabiner. Um, now I live in Florida, so you would say like, why do I need something like this? Well, I don't need it for rock climbing, you're right but there may still be some kind of instance that I need to scale something, or maybe I just need to use a carabiner for something really heavy. So I like the idea of actually having the peace of mind knowing that I have a carabiner that will withstand, you know, X amount of thousand pounds. Lastly, on this table, we have here a pry bar. Why do we have a pry bar? I have this pry bar for multiple reasons. For one, this was $5, and it's a good, legit, you know, Stanley pry bar or whatever. Um, it's compact enough that it doesn't take up much room, it's light enough that it doesn't take up much weight, and they make specific like pry knives, but these pry knives cost hundreds of dollars. Again, I paid five dollars for this pry bar. There may be situations that you need to pry into something or you might need a pry bar, that's the whole reason why they make pry knives. So rather than wasting that much time on a knife that's really kind of only has one purpose, I can still have my main survival knife, my EDC knife, and I can have it tucked away in my bag in case I need it. A pry bar. So guys, I hope this video kind of just brought some insight or maybe even helped you think about like, man, I really need to add something like that in my bag or hey, at least I know I'm on the right track because I have most of that stuff. Um, again, guys, with some of this stuff, I know some of it either seems duh or some of it seems like why would you need that if you're, you know, survival and you're all bug out, you're supposed to be super macho. I want us to get rid of this idea that you have to be a certain way in order to be a survivalist. I'm, we're not trying to be tactical, right? We're not trying to be the next Bear Grylls or whatever. We're trying to be realistic. We're trying to live a comfortable life. We're trying to survive. And again, a huge part of survival is going to be your mental state as well as your physical, as well as your supplies. So I want you guys to really truly think about that. If everything got taken away from you or you had to go bug out or you had to bug in, whatever the case may be, do you feel that you would want to go through that trying to just tough it out and try to be manly and macho or whatever the case may be or do you want to have at least as normal of a life as you possibly can at least as to what you're accustomed to so again think about those things what do you like what's going to be some kind of form of entertainment that you can bring with you realistically what are some things that will help boost your morale because that's going to be the way you're truly going to survive in the end so as always guys be prepared